There we go. Um, as I mentioned before, the most exciting thing for me is the fact that this is going to be gluten free because over time I'm becoming more and more sensitive to gluten. Yeah. And I there's very few people who are truly allergic, they say, but more and more people are having problems. And yeah. so um what what made you think to what made you pick this particular recipe? Well, this is actually my family recipe. I just made it gluten-free. So, uh, hold on, we're gonna put this in so that you guys don't have to hear my stuff. Yeah, um, you wanna turn it a little bit so we're not watching TV too. <laughs> there you go. I, 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 I grew up without TV. TV really distracts me easily, so. <laughs> I understand. So um, this is my, my great-grandmother's recipe. Uh, the only thing that I've, I mean, I've changed it up a bit because of my allergies, but, um, so it's not like I came up with this recipe because I had to, what I've learned is you can still do your family recipes. You just have to learn the right substitutions. So once you learn those substitutions, then you can mess with it. it it's easier, you know? So, well, we, um, we baked the cake last week and it, Suzanne ran that and it was all about substitutions i don't think there were yeah there's probably two things in the whole recipe that we actually um went 100 percent with christmas mm -hmm. pudding christmas pudding yeah. mm -hmm. i i absolutely love the ability to look at a recipe and say this is an inspiration and let's put our own twist to it right so, yeah absolutely yeah so i get that um let's go over the basic uh, ingredients list that you sent me and then you mm -hmm. can tell me what are some things you feel can be changed around yeah because this is gluten-free you said gluten-free flour right huh how did you how do you figure out and choose which kinds because there's so many different kinds so <laughs> um <laughs> some some are a yes. fail so we only had um, almond flour on hand one day. I just get the simple truth, gluten-free all purpose because it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So I got um, a red mill, similar one-to-one -one baking flour. Yeah. So it's just like, what is readily available, right? Yeah, can you, can, yeah. Uh, can, Sydney, can you read the ingredients off the back? Cause we were talking about it the other day, what the gluten-free flour is about. It's, it's brown rice flour, potato starch, potato starch, um, white sorghum, rice flour, quinoa, millet, amaranth, tapioca starch, and xanthan gum. And wow. some flours, you can use some different types of flour and then get xanthan gum because they actually do sell xanthan gum. And it's a very small package because you, you literally just need like a pinch. It, a little bit it's goes a long way for it. Somebody said it's pricey. Yeah, yeah it's like five yours, bucks for a bag. It's actually much more... Um, has a lot more ingredients than mine. Mine is basically rice flour, potato mm -hmm. starch, tapioca flour, sorghum flour, and xanthan gum. Yeah. So you can put tapioca and some, flour and uh, what is that? The gum and both of that. The xanthan gum. Stretchy. Yes, it does. But when you use something like what I was trying to say earlier is I used, well, David was trying to help me with the chicken and dumplings and all we had on hand was almond flour. And he was like, well, th this should be fine, right? And I was like, yeah, 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 just throw some xanthan gum in it and it'll make it, you know, tacky and it'll be fine. Uh, no, completely disintegrated and was like one giant lump. I mean, they were ruined. So um, no almond flour for this. I have found the most successful one. Um, we had a little bit of a similar experience with coconut flour as well. I'm sure if you do add like tapioca or xanthan gum, you may get the same consistency. I myself just not have not, I haven't tried it. Um, or you know how busy I am. So I don't have time to <laughs> keep trying. Well, it's kind of things. experimentation. Yeah. yeah. So um, we really like the Simple Mills all purpose flour. Um, one, because it's resealable. I like that about it. So um, most gluten-free flours, and if you have experience with it, you know um, they don't last as long. So that's why I like that this 
has a sealant on it. And this they, one they tend to be very fine, so they extract moisture a lot easier. Exactly. So I like that this is resealable, which of course you can do your own resealable thing, but that that's a, that's the big seller for me on this one is because of that they do collect moisture a lot quicker. So I find this um, just easier. So that's a flower. <laughs> Went on about that. Um, my grandma's old recipe was really simple. She would use chicken bouillon, beef bouillon, which this will not have beef. This will only be poultry. Um, and then she would do salt and pepper. A and lot so of people are years, becoming allergic to the red meat because they get bit by the tick in my area. And so some, some vegan scientists invented this disease that ticks bite you and then you can't eat red meat. I mean, yeah, it's like, probably. <laughs> <laughs> um. So uh, that was my great grandma's recipe. And, you know, the beef was for the color and then a little bit of flavor too. She always did like a two to one ratio. You know, if you had two chicken bouillon, then you would throw in one beef. Um, so I just do the chicken. Sometimes if I'm feeling froggy, I might throw a little bit of vegetable in, but I really like this concentrate. If you can yeah. see this, um, Ooh, yeah. it's liquid. So it's already liquid um, and I get the reduced sodium one. And so you have like, a similar, like this right here will do five gallons of soup. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So and see, it's two, like two teaspoons. Commercial, commercial version. Yeah. Two and teaspoons it's like a to one cup. Mine is like a paste. We have stuff like that too. Yeah. This I love because um, all you, I like to drink chicken broth if I have like an upset stomach or something. And I like to put, we have, like you were saying earlier before we started recording, we have an onion soup mix that we do too that's gluten free. And if you want that recipe, let me know. Um, <laughs> It's, it's actually really good. So I'll actually put a dash of that because we grind it up like you would, you know, in a package and I'll put this and then I'll get hot water and I'll drink that when my stomach's upset. So we always so basically have this a, on hand. a hot cup of uh, chicken tea. Yeah, essentially. <laughs> so um, this is a staple in our household. Absolutely. And and we really like this brand that the kitchen accomplice. Um, this is our, you know, this is our favorite. You can get this at Kroger. It's like so this alone our international people probably don't have kroger but similar true <laughs> <laughs> like... touche um and because we were only doing this for an hour today i did cheat normally um this is like a four to five hour process for me um so i did get a rotisserie chicken today so what uh, just describe like if it's a four or five hour process like you know so yeah so um what you normally do is you would you, you're going to boil your chicken after you get your broth set i do not like to start boiling my chicken until my broth is set and ready to go so if i am doing something in a hurry i will so, pick up the rotisserie so this chicken. was the whole chicken i did yep. this like three days ago i boiled yeah. the whole chicken i um, stripped it down but then i also skimmed off the fat of the broth yes and i do have a you know um a quart of broth i yeah. did have a quart of broth like you i drank the whole thing <laughs> <Just> like, <laughs> i'm actually thinking of making I'm, hey babe will you make me a chicken broth that actually sounds really good right now um so uh and i was yes. spending the weekend out in the woods and the cabins they 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 provided in each one like of the cabins for me their own chicken eggs so I was able yeah. to pick up some local chicken eggs and then I have this nice little uh, container. They just got laid. So. Oh, that's awesome. But, but you said they needed to be out of the fridge to try to be like huh? room temperature. Yeah. But um, no, I mean, you can always, always, someone gave me this, but I never, ever, ever buy chicken broth. It's just like, if I'm, if I'm actually doing chicken broth, I will, let me see if I can, I can't get to it, but I have like a few quarts, like I actually mm -hmm. like in chicken broth. I'll do like yeah. a couple, tur or or turkey broth, because turkey is basically to me a giant chicken and you can get yeah. a lot more from it. Right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, th this right here, it's ridiculous. It's literally just like three tablespoons of, you know. Mm -hmm. And I usually, and, and you have to use what? like four to five of those for this too. So, you know, that's why I like the, the broth. It, it's, it's cheaper. It's, um, 
it's worth it because that bottle alone will make 28 cups. So that's a whole month of chicken broth for me if I want to drink it every day. But the <laughs> cool process is you cook a whole chicken down. You cook um, a whole chicken down. I always have my broth ready before though. Like I, my broth has to taste good because I want my chicken to, you know, get the flavor. Now, do you do so, a re-broth where you crack the bones and make a dark broth too? Or are you just, you're mm -mm. just doing a light broth? I just do a light broth. Um, but you do want a whole chicken and I get the, um, I get it with the gizzards and the heart and everything else. And I actually boil that with it for flavor. So that okay. adds that extra flavor. So and I don't put them like in boil it, with but, it, what, um, onions and celery and carrots or no. Um, I usually do onion powder with it. Um, but yeah, you can, you can put onions in it too. Um, no, I actually get my broth fully ready. So I do oregano um basil and then um we only have ground time today but i i usually do you know regular time and then lavender flower Ooh. um that's a new addition that we've done and then salt and pepper to your liking so um when i make stock i don't put carrots because i feel like it makes it too sweet okay so that's fair i might add um, carrots to the soup later as a texture because mm -hmm. it's cheap yeah. but the actual broth i don't put carrots in i like the unless i have leftover tops like i save the bits when i have vegetables and i might put a top or two in there to add some so now i want to make some tea too <laughs> yeah and um I mean, from last week suzanne Suzanne, there's your syrup from like last week, the citrus syrup. Oh, nice. I already used some for some tea. So I ended up with a whole quart. Whole thing. So um, I am going to start my base because I do like it to cook for a while. I just, I like the flavor to gather up. Um, I know you're going to want measurements. I don't measure. I come I mean, from that part of it, like what that southern family. Want? Yeah. And and that's the thing. Like my mom makes chicken and dumplings different than I do, and vice versa. And I'm I'm also partially over here. Hi mom. <laughs> because I'm not measuring from her mother. <laughs> <laughs> we eyeballing. Um, but mom likes my version of chicken and dumplings too, even the gluten-free ones. So, you know, my my parents do not have any allergies. I just have been blessed with them in the last two years. So this is a journey well, that I've had for the last two years. even tougher where you like all of a sudden get it. I mean, many people mm -hmm. are born with them. Right. And for me, it's been slowly, like it's slowly getting worse and worse. Mm -hmm. And so I can't imagine. And same for, same for me. Mine's slowly getting worse and worse as well. Um, so I always start with my chicken. <clears throat> Well, broth gonna, first i always need onions and stuff onions and garlic so. <clears throat> i do do garlic powder i have that in front um although i've heard some people are allergic to garlic now it's too intense really? i have a co-worker who's allergic to garlic and they put That's in awful. so many things I would are they vampire like, <laughs> i mean like i would want to be at that point Like, so, no, uh, I'm becoming a vampire. Yeah. Yeah, definitely garlic and onion. I just saw the onion powder. Where was it? I need a bunch. Where's your onion powder? Bacon ones? broth. Thank you. I got fresh garlic. You want fresh? So, I just put powder in. That'll be too much. I don't think I'd have any problem making that. Uh, chicken broth. I'll probably <laughs> actually put this around back so it's just tucked out of the way. Who? But all right. Now I wonder if if people made dumplings for other types of soup. Like, what do you mean? I don't know. Like, I mean, we're we're doing chicken and dumplings. Is there such thing as beef and dumplings? Or I don't know. I probably like a mushroom. Sure I think pork is common, especially in Asia. But just make a basic soup mix and then add dumplings to it. Yeah. So um, 
this basil is a little bit more fresh. So um, I'm probably not going to put as much. Mom, is this fresh basil? Yeah, it's awesome. No, I meant like, did you grow it? <laughs> you just bought it. Freshly gotten. I can't wait until, so our oregano is already coming back. I was actually going to get some out of the garden. I forgot to. Um, we're about to germinate all of our stuff, but we're going to start building a greenhouse this year. Uh oh. And I'm super excited because we right. like being self sufficient and growing our own stuff. So, um, but I, I eat so much that I can grow some, but there's no way possible I can grow enough. Well, we'll have it year round. So, come on over. <laughs> but, mm. and again, I had ground thyme, so I'm going to cut that down. I would probably start with like, I don't know, a teaspoon for each thing. Again, this is at your leisure. Your um, amount of water needs to be um, enough to <clears throat> be able to soak up your dumplings. So just be aware of that. You know, like I said, I don't measure. I would do at least six cups of water, probably eight cups of water, just to be on the safe side. Um, because if you are boiling the chicken in it, obviously you're going to get a, re a reduction of your water. And then once you put your dumplings in, you're going to get a reduction for that. But not only that, you need to be conscious of the fact that you're going to need to take out about um, one to two cups, depending on how many dumplings you're doing, because you do make your dumplings from your broth. Wow. So the purpose of the egg is once you get your broth set, this is why it's important to get your broth set because your broth needs to cool down to room temperature. And then you're going to beat in your egg and add in your flour. And that is literally how you make your dumplings. So all of this, you use every part of it. That's what I like about it too. So you, you get that flavor throughout the whole process. So we have so to that's figure why out it's how to cheat, cheat the process a little bit and make, because you need the, you said the, it has to be at warm temperature or room temperature. Yeah. You just don't want it to cook your egg. Yeah, you that's don't want a scrambled part. egg. You don't want a scrambled egg in it. Yeah, exactly. So you need it to be cool enough and I, you can cheat by putting it in the freezer for two minutes. Like it doesn't have to necessarily be cold. It just can't be warm enough to cook your egg. All right. So, ooh, I went a little heavy on the time on accident. You need more water. So basically just uh, get a really big pot and... Like oh yeah i have lots, a specific lots, 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 lots. yeah i literally have a pot that is just for dumplings and when david and i moved together he's like this thing is huge you don't need it and i said you are not throwing me a dumpling pot <laughs> it will stay here and you will understand why and after i made chicken and dumplings for the first time he was like okay i get it <laughs> so um he's like i get it now and then the lavender seed this isn't a thing for everybody um Again, you can get this at Kroger. What is it? I know lavender oh, no. flower, not seed. I said seed. Um, this is lavender flower. And I, I don't know if you would like it or, but it just brings out this flavor in it that we've recently, we, we actually were just in the store walking down and he was like, huh. So we've tried this on potatoes. We I've never used dumplings. lavender except for a dessert yeah nope it, it, it gives it that sweet savory taste so this is about as much as i'm going to put in because a little bit goes a long way with the lavender flower it is very strong so this is probably about a teaspoon um and that's as much as i will put in there i'm i will taste it and see if i feel that it needs some more but that's usually about as much as i'll put in there because it is very strong um but it it does Mm, it's amazing with the flavor you said you so, use it for a lot of different things huh? we do we use it on our potatoes we like to um slice up golden potatoes and almost make like our own don't potato overdo wedges. It. you'll get sick of it no no <laughs> but we don't eat that all the time you know that's it's good on chicken it's uh and i'm putting salt and pepper in too all right <laughs> it's good on chicken it's good on um, potatoes. It's good in the chicken and dumplings. Um, gosh, we've used it in quite a few things. I don't know. Sometimes we just throw it in something to see what it tastes like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we like doing that. So I remember I had, some, actually, I take that back. I've had 
a savory biscuit that mm -hmm. had lavender in it. Okay. That was phenomenal. And I kept thinking, I want to use more lavender, and I never did. But all right. You should. I like it. Um, I'm totally going to do the Southern thing, and I'm, I'm going to be tasting my broth. So I know, or you're more kitchen professional, but I'm a home cooking mama. So, so I mean, all you have to do <laughs> to be a professional is you have your stirring one and then you have your tasting spoon and you just go like that and taste it. So you have two spoons. That's it. And so you can see I've, I've got over here where I set my spoons out. And you can just get a little like that. So that's. And some chefs just have a whole bunch of little spoons on the <laughs> stove. Right. Yeah. You yeah. might like you have a basically a spoon. Um, just if you don't want to cross taste. I need more chicken broth. Now, if you have a really good that mouth that you can clean the spoon all the way. No, just kidding. Oh, yeah. That's so, nice. like, so here I'm like, I cut some onions because. I will add onions to my broth, but see all these bits here, I just save and put it in a freezer bag in the freezer. Mm -hmm. Or flavor. Flavor. Yeah. I also need to taste this chicken to see if I'm gonna be, no sitting control the, Sorry. yeah, that'll complement well. I just got a regular rotisserie chicken. Um, so you need this, you know, do you guys, anybody bit. on here have a trick on how to peel garlic? My favorite is if you're doing a lot of it, mm -hmm. you take the sunk out and then you just put it in, let's see. Like a cloth or something and then- No, I put it in a glass jar. Yeah. And you go like this. Really? Now they are, they're peeled. Well, that's crazy. So that's if you want to do a lot of garlic. And, you know, with a wide mouth jar, you can put a lot more in. Otherwise, if I just have a few of them, I just roll them in my hands and then it'll peel it. Huh. Uh, and then, of you know, if, if I don't have the jar, I can also smash it on the side of the knife if I'm gonna mint them. Yeah, that's what I've always done, is the smashing, the smooshing. Okay, so for me, I'm okay with where this is at-ish right now. I am gonna go ahead and add my carrots and my celery. If you wanna do like Orr had mentioned earlier, he likes to add his later, that's fine. I like the flavor of the carrot and the celery in my broth. Um, and I, I actually well, I was just don't talking when I cook add. down a chicken. Yeah. Like, you know, a lot of people will put carrots, onions, garlic, the whole thing in there and then scoop those out. Right. With the flavor of the broth. Right. But I, I don't know. I just tend to think carrots are a little too sweet. And so I'll, I'll just add them as texture. So it doesn't flavor the broth. It has just yeah. a sweet pop. There. Um, we have much different knives at home, so I'm just using a cleaver. <laughs> My mom doesn't have the best knives. <laughs> so don't there touch you me go. Over here. <laughs> hey mom, I think she just said she's gonna buy you knives for Christmas. <laughs> Better <laughs> knives, that's what I need. You do not. You don't have David knives. All right. I don't think I can. That's what Or just said. Or just said it was a good Christmas idea too. <laughs> now sometimes I have the old onion. Like this one had a little green sprout. I'm gonna save that for decoration. Oh yeah, I'm not fancy on my presentation. David, I I, David is very much like the I'm not chef a fancy of cook, the family. But... He likes presentation. He likes it to look nice, you know. I'm he's, I'm good at cooking nice lots of nutritious food for a lot of people. But That's I'm true. getting more and more with this show, learning about a little bit of presentation. All right. Which is fair. 
So that's that. And you can make the celery like however you like. This one See, with that broth, box, so. I just used a little of this chicken because mostly, so this was chicken pulled and then I poured the broth in here and filled it up and then it congealed. Yeah. Know, the jello of the chicken. So I literally yeah. can see this was Brooklyn. full and I just put a little bit in there to create the broth. And yeah. then I'll add this right before I serve it. I'll yeah. add all this chicken, maybe. I I usually use a whole chicken, if, even if I'm doing a single batch or a double batch of dumplings. Um, <laughs> well, this I container right here is, uh, this container is two chickens, so. Gotcha. But it matters the size of the chicken too, right? If you're using a Cornish it hen, does. that doesn't give you anything. Right. That's All very right. true. I usually use um, like a young, a young one. I'm like this rotisserie chicken with the smallest this. I've one. had this for, let's see, is it expired yet? Someone <laughs> gave this to me and I've yet to use it. Is it expired yet? <laughs> I thought I uh, yes, it is. January, it says best used by January 10, 23. All right. Well, that's that. There you go. Had it for a long time. Hey, Mom, do you have, where's you your memory? always make broth from scratch. Like your big plastic one. If I can put my mother. Debbie. Let's see. Where's your, um, where's your plastic measuring cup thingy? Oh, that soup's good. Right there. <laughs> okay. Hold on. But you said earlier we were talking, what is an Italian seasoning? This right here is my favorite seasoning, adobo all purpose. And adobo oh. is, you never, everyone's different for that, but this is basically turmeric powder, garlic, onion, salt, and white pepper. I mm. think it's all in here. Not high turmeric version. Making so a I just put a little bit. I like the white pepper because it gives the flavor, but you don't yeah. see it. Yeah. I so like white pepper. White pepper. It has a little bit of a uh, spice to it. All right. All right. A bit different than black pepper. I'm okay. going to do exactly what you did. I'm having myself a cup of soup. <laughs> um, I like to use a measuring cup kind of like this. So, so mine's your... starting to steam just slightly here. <laughs> um, I This is what I usually mix up my batter in because you're going to have to roll it out. So you're going to need counter space. Um, you do need to roll it out. I like my dumplings thin. Some people like them thicker. Make them to your leisure. I was raised very thin dumplings. My grandma was very strict. Yeah, so um, you're gonna do one cup of broth to two cups of flour. And then that will be with one egg. So if you wanna double it, you would have to do two cups of broth, two eggs, four cups of flour. Now, sometimes you have to add more flour. I feel like it just, it depends on the broth that day. Cause sometimes- okay, tell, tell me about how much again. So you wanna do one cup of broth to two cups of flour. Okay, so one to two With eggs. one egg. So that would be your recipe for a single batch, a double batch. You just I, obviously I double everything. In the mixer, or you just mix it in that actual. I cup. just I just whisk it. Yeah, I mix it all in here. Okay. Um, I'll whisk the egg in, but of course, this is the time that you need to get that cup out, and you need to um, let it cool off, or you're going to cook your egg, because okay. you're going to put your egg in before you put your flour in. So I need one cup of broth. One cup of broth, and, and it goes a long way. And put that in the fridge or freezer to cool off. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do as well. Oh, I got a chunk of garlic got in there. Look at that. All right. So this is, this rate broth here is three hours later after we were cooking the chicken. Right. <laughs> yeah, because when you have a whole chicken, I don't care how big or small it is. You got to let it, you know slow cook but yeah that all right why did i fill that up i just need a cup <laughs> i know 
There we go. A cup. Into the freezer. Into the freezer. Let me get the celery out. Mm -hmm. Yep. You need it to make that celery. You to roll it out, huh? Yeah. And I mean, you can always section it off and you can do it on a cutting board, you know, and do a little bit at a time. You can always do that too. I've done that before. I mean, our kitchen is pretty small um, at our house. So like two people can't be in there at once cooking. But we'll change that one day. Um, I'm going to have to unplug for a second to put this in the fridge. Yeah, she has the whole family over there, so she put in her headphones. So we're not listening to whooping and hollering. But I don't know, that might be that'd be good background sound. The whole family. I don't think I've ever been to. Okay. Sorry, guys. All right. I'd push that thing away. So this is boiling. I'm just going to put it on a low simmer. Um, so I don't want it to continue to boil and lose all that moisture. While this is what I usually do while the broth is uh, cooling off. That's when I pick my chicken. So um, I still have to. Before I took the chicken out and then went to pick it. It was too hot like so many times. Yes. Oh, I've, I don't think. Uh, over like, the years, I, I don't think I can. Be picked. Yeah, and I, I don't think I can feel certain parts of my fingers anymore because of it. I so. keep thinking. <laughs> so I have these. These are these these are gloves for taking food out of. Mm -hmm. And I there was a couple times where I was like, should I just put these gloves on? Because they almost you can almost grab. See, I mean it's almost <laughs> grabbable, <laughs> but then I was like, then I'll have to wash the gloves. Fair. Uh, I would just like, just have some picking chicken gloves. So, all right. I'm going to grab a bowl. So, off you go again. Just a moment. So, we just need one egg at room temperature. I can put the rest of the eggs back in. You know, although, you know, if you have a good local egg, they, um, they actually had it at the cabin they had a little sign that said just leave the eggs out on the counter and this is why Ooh. if you have a good what? local egg if you don't wash the egg it has like a coating on it that um seals it if you do wash it of course don't use soap because the soap will go inside if you use hot water that will have the water go inside if you use cold water, it creates a vacuum, so it pulls it. So when you rinse it, always rinse your eggs with cold water. But yeah, you can just leave a good local egg that has not been washed. You can just leave it out on the counter for, I don't know, I've I've read many, many times, six weeks or seven weeks. Yeah, we've talked about this before. Most foreign countries, they uh, they don't refrigerate their eggs. But also, most foreign countries they inoculate the chickens against salmonella, so they're, that's right. And that's the reason food doesn't they... have that in it. Exactly. So, is anybody else weird like me, and they like the skin on rotisserie chicken? Just like or I like boiled chicken. Paw. Yeah. So I almost always eat some of the skin. <laughs> so this is my this is my dried herb mix. I mean, not herbs, uh, vegetables. Mom used to always do this when we had lots and lots of extras. Do, um, oops, um, let me change the camera. Uh, onions, carrot, garlic, um, different herbs. Um, sometimes peas, but we rarely had many peas. We usually ate all the peas. Uh, what else? Usually zucchini, uh, yellow squash, 
And then, you know, you just put a little of that in a soup. Um, but now, of course, my local farmers are all growing things in hoop houses. So I actually can get sweet carrots locally almost year round. Hi, Brooklyn. Don't worry about in the winter anymore. That's okay. awesome. See, that's what we want. We, I we, really um, like you know, especially herbs. Herbs, I think I would have a greenhouse with just herbs. So we have um, one place that's going to be specifically dedicated to that this year. And then um, when we get our greenhouse, we're going to have one wall that uh, we're going to do rows of it. So I, I love fresh herbs. So we want to be able to literally walk outside, pick it, and we might have multiples. You know, we use chives all the time. Off-grid or, you know, self-contained homes. I have people do uh, sunroom slash greenhouse off the side of their house. That's what we're going to be doing. And then you can have it where you open a window to like let the yep. heat into your house and circulate it through the house in the winter, but then close it Yeah. Um, in the summer. Right. Um, that's so the idea the that we're going with too. You also spend time out there. That's where you go out there and, you know, mm -hmm. but um, more and more, the issue isn't staying warm in the winter, but staying cool in the summer. And so you really have to figure out the design to yeah. cool in the summer without using electricity. That's the goal is to make it so designed. So, all yeah, right. um, that's something that we're wanting to look into so you're just as well. Feeling the chicken. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm chunking it. Um, oh, man. I don't. That is good. I know, right? <laughs> One of my favorite things. Um, by the way, I loved that coconut water the other day. I don't think I've had it with the turmeric before. It was really good. Yeah, ginger turmeric is my. Um, I love ginger turmeric. My tea. medicine, basically. Yeah. I need that every day for um, pain relief. There's a dog. I'm not just throwing chicken stop, on the floor, by the way. Stop <laughs> swelling. So. I know I, I'm I am intrigued by the dumplings. I need to figure out. I have no idea. I so rarely bake that I have no idea where my rolling pin is. Where is it? You can use your hands if you need to. I mean, but if you want thinner dumplings, I mean you gotta you can always do the default of a, a bottle of wine. Mm-hmm. Mom, where is your rolling pin? Can you grab it for me? Where, where, where is your rolling pin? We went through this last. What did you say? We recently went through this. I found it, and now I can't remember where I put it. Thank you. So I don't have. Was it the same rolling pin Mom has had for God? Who knows how long? Forty years. Yeah, about forty years. Forty-year-old rolling pin, like. It's not a great one, but it works. And it, yes, it's perfect. In the what do you mean it's, it's not a great one? If you keep it for 40 years, it's a great, 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 great. I don't one. mean like it's not a great one. I mean, it's not like it's not, you know, fancy, perfect condition by any means. Like this is the family rolling pin, as I call well, it. Well, it looks like grandmother's. It was how many one. heads, yeah, how many heads has been hit with and it? And I have newer. Uh, no I have heads. A new one. Yeah, she has a new one, but we still but use it. But I don't one. like it as well as this. Yeah, she said she doesn't like it as well as the other one. There you go. Oh, it's not broken. Not broken. Yeah, broke Do we need a, a whisk, you said, and... Whisk or a fork. I mean, you just got to whisk in the... in the egg. This rotisserie chicken is falling apart, which is great, but then it's making it hard to... get it. It's a good chicky. Yeah, I, I like the flavor of rotisserie chicken. It just, I feel like it wastes a lot of um, good juices. Oh, yeah. No, I wholeheartedly agree. I This is a quick thing. Like, I usually, like I said, I usually boil it myself. You can control the flavors with that, you know, because um, it does help with the broth. You know, the broth probably isn't going to be 
like it usually is today because I don't have that chicken flavor in it, but it'll be okay. It'll still be delicious and edible. Okay, this is frustrating. Where is my rolling pin? You can always get... Oh, um, I took it. I took it. I probably took it to the commercial kitchen. No, ma'am. Go. Mother, get your demon spawn away. I call her a demon spawn for a reason. Everybody's probably like, what? This dog will get up and she will eat steaks. Like she will get up. If nobody is looking, she will get up and she will eat the food off of the counter to the point that she's like tried to crawl in the sink. So basically ate. she's a true Italian dog, just part of the family. <laughs> like, I don't think there's ever been like, like an Italian family where like everybody's not in there just like nibbling on stuff and helping mm -hmm. and except it'll That's be what my I said like the rolling dinner. pin grandma used to get the rolling pin and whop some people yeah except it'll be my parents dinner that they just got done cooking it's not sharing and then the, then they have nothing to eat for dinner so <laughs> mm -hmm. uh-huh okay well I only had that one measuring cup and it's full of the broth so I'm gonna have to need that for the flour yeah Anyway. How long do we have until? Huh? How long do we have until? Um, I don't know. Does she... Like, is it okay if it's gonna be? Those are what? Fifteen minutes? No. <laughs> <It's just> like, <laughs> you go in there and like, here you fix this. Turkey. Well, I just want to make sure everybody okay. Wait, you know, I don't want to. We're here for hours sometimes. <laughs> okay, so you guys are okay with that? Making sure. <laughs> as long as it's as long as you're entertaining. Hey, but, um, <laughs> um, so if you're actually spending three or four hours making the chicken, what do you mm -hmm. tend to make as a snack while you're waiting for it to be done? The broth. <laughs> Just like, because you're still getting everybody's coming in smelling the, smelling the chicken broth and they're like, I want some of that. So like you end up with half the chicken broth because everybody wants some. So oh no, I always over Because um I mean nine times out of ten, we'll end up eating chicken while we're doing that. Like you're you're literally eating it as you're making it, <laughs> is how it usually happens in our family. So, you know, um, we'll pick off the chicken. Uh we always, mom and I, whenever we make it together, we'll we'll have to do it today, but we always break um the wishbone. We always do the wishbone. That's always been like a family thing. That is something that I've passed on to Maddie too. So you don't save anything for a marriage matter of dispute later. No, like, I, 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 I always, I always thought, but I, I would like, okay. Um, I've got up here probably 10 chicken wishbones hanging. Yeah. And I was thinking that that would be a good kit to give to someone right when they first get married. Anytime you have an argument, but it's also kind of, you know, creepy yeah so i don't know if it would be an accepted gift or not but you know anytime you have an argument just pull out the wishbone and settle it break it apart yeah but, I don't think that's creepy, jewelry but... works a lot better jewelry works a lot better <laughs> jewelry. <laughs> it um, wouldn't with me so if you break it what is the tradition that you have good luck or you um make a wish or we make a wish that's our tradition so my uh grandma Darlin started that she always did it with me whenever I was a kid she did it with my mom and then my mom you know carried it on and so forth so it, it's actually become like a family tradition um my grandma Darlin that woman is a saint and uh like she's literally loved adored by anybody so ever since I was young, my mom's always made it a point, you know, that we, we cherish her. We cherish the things that come from her because she's just one of those souls. Like she's one of the sweetest people you'll ever meet. Everybody's family. You're hungry. Come sit down. Like she is that, she is that grandma that people are like, Oh, well, I'm going to grandma's. And then you have to go, well, who's grandma? Because you're going to come down and you're going to sit at the table and you're going to be fed. And she will legitimately just cook for you. That's her way of showing love was through food. So well, you know the hashtag of this show? Hmm. The hashtag of the show is feeding others is love. Yeah. Yeah. And my whole family's big on cooking. Like, like for my grandma Karen, 
my comfort food with her, which I can't have anymore. And I actually want to try to find a gluten-free, alpha gal free um, way to make it was goulash. And goulash. Wait a second. Kind of is, I mean, what makes it put, put gluten in it? I thought for me, goulash was just always just like potatoes and carrots and nope. celery. And like, that's not what it is for my family. Okay. Which I find interesting. I love hearing. Um, I've had so many different people tell me their version of goulash, and it's so and different. Bar- than- we usually did a grain, like we did barley or rye mm-hmm. in our goulash. I mean, we rarely did meat. So goulash with my grandma was um, elbow macaroni, and then you did beef. You did it with your garlic, your onion, and then you would do um, tomatoes, green bell pepper, and corn. Oh. And then she would do cheese and, um, and she would spice it up. So that was goulash in my I mean, It doesn't sound bad, but that to me Mm-mm. doesn't sound like goulash at all. That's what my grandma called goulash. <laughs> like, but and what is canned goulash? tomatoes. Goulash yeah. just doesn't goulash just mean stew? I yeah. Don't know. I I'm pretty sure that. that's how I always took it. Um, yeah. But it, it's kind of, you know, everything but the kitchen sink, like, my grandma was a young mom and she had to figure out, you know, stuff to cook for the kids so the and question, work. And... Do you, you know, if you strip the chicken off, do you ever make another broth with the bones or you always throw them away? My mom does. Um, sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't. I, it just depends on the day. Like if I'm going to be, uh, if I'm going to have time. You know, what I do is I collect all the bones, put them in a freezer bag. And then when I need just broth later, mm -hmm. I'll put them in a pressure cooker and cook them. And you can make, in you know, about 20 minutes or so, you can make a broth. Mm -hmm. And then if I need more broth, I will then crack the bones and make a dark broth. So you make a light broth. Mom, have you ever made a dark broth by cracking the bones? But it's so much work to crack the bones before you cook them. I just boiled the bones. Mom said she just does hers by just boiling the bones. Or said you can do a um, a dark broth by cracking them. So if you have a nutcracker, you can crack the ends off the bones with a nutcracker. Yeah. But once it's cooked, you can cut the ends off the bones and then recook it. Okay. Um, That's what they sell. He said if you cook the bones, you can cut off the ends, or you can like get a nutcracker and kind of crack them. But you said you do it after you cook them once, right? Yeah, it's always less. You know, then I'm getting two broths from the same bone. Mom freezes the bones too. I thought she did a. Thought she did it fresh. She'll freeze hers and then I'll I'll do it until I get like a you know an almost full gallon bag of bones, and then I can just I can make. Right. You know, 10 quarts of broth with it and can it. Yeah. Um, or I need it for a big something. I can just make it and have a ton of broth. But yeah, with the pressure cooker, it's, you know, under an hour. Mm-hmm. So, um, all right. <laughs> I am twitching to do some, make some dumplings if you don't mind. I don't mind. I was just trying to get my chicken done so I could get it out. <laughs> I'm almost done. I'm literally like speed pulling it okay. off. Yeah. Um, so. It was a bigger chicken than I thought. Oh. Yes, I know. You like chicken too. Thank you for reminding <laughs> me. It's just like, yeah, be careful not to drop the bone. because. That... Oh, I know. This dog will eat anything. And I don't know how she hasn't like I literally don't know how she hasn't died because she's ate chocolate. She's ate all the things that dogs are not supposed to be able to eat. And here she is. <laughs> she's a wine writer. And they always say not to feed chicken bones to dogs. Yeah, it can dislodge in their stomach and it can cause a lot of damage. Now we and ate it and chomped on a couple of bones. And I remember the dog. Will you give me the broth out, Mom? I'm listening. I'm sorry. Yeah, I remember the the dog coughs as that that bit of bone like. Yeah, yeah. Are sneaky, sneaky. Okay. They love a bird. Yeah. 
<laughs> my dog has eight of, I have a, we have four dogs. One we just recently had to put down. Um, but we have my uh, basset hound. And my, my friend was dog sitting and she watched her eat a bird beak and all. And she's like calling me, freaking out. She's like, I don't know what to do. Your dog's going to die. And then you kill your dog. And it ate the, it ate the whole bird beak and all. And I don't know what to do. And I'm like, well, um, we'll be home tomorrow and we'll see. You want to share these with your new friends? What? Love like from the kitchen. Written cookbooks, the handwritten. So our family goes back tradition. To oh, yeah. Traditions. This is mom has like the the holy grail of recipes. This is all of our family's so this recipes. This is all of our family on, on like Thank both you sides. For sharing an old family. So recipe. this was a gift that You're welcome. one of my aunts sat down and took a year to write down family recipes in. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. And then I ordered blank cookbooks. I, I personally ordered cookbooks. I have yet to get one, by the way, but I know most of these by heart. Oh, so. This is this is hers. <laughs> so, it's like, so, so basically your mom said you have to die for me to get that. Writing food. her all of yeah. the family recipes. So you can order that, these. Right? <laughs> No, she and, didn't hear you say that. <laughs> but it takes, but it takes you like a year to sit down and make time to fill these okay. recipes. We unplug that. There we go. Okay, now, now you can hear him, and then oh. we unplug these. Oh, uh, I, I was okay. telling, I was telling your okay. your daughter that you had to. So this one, you're gonna have to die for her to get that me, book. But I took the time to put all of my family's recipes in it too, so she has both sides of the family recipes. There you go. <laughs> Just like so, it's kind of a you know sentimental kind of you know thing that you could do if you want if you were interested. Especially one of my favorite gifts. Okay, I had the thing turned off because I unplugged it. I'm sorry, so you couldn't hear her. I was we wondering why I couldn't hear you. Oh, okay. Yep. So. Okay, right. so we're gonna get started on the dumplings. I think my egg is at room temperature. Finally. Yeah, it takes a while. <laughs> well, um, I'll start. I'll bring it. But oh, I need to get the broth out of the fridge. Yeah, you should. I personally like to use a fork. I say whisk because most people like to use a whisk. I use a fork. What we do in our fam. Well, how about I every use family. a really big fork? So. Yeah. Well. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell a secret. You know, you can steal these there at your local restaurants. <laughs> I was looking for I'm a I'm a three prong thief. So I have a couple of three prong restaurants, you know, or you know, that I've taken from a steak place in a to go box by accident or maybe on purpose. Maybe that's where this came from, but this is a big thing. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So um you also want to turn your Woo! Brooklyn, get back. I mean, okay. so let's compare it to a regular fork. Hold on, technical difficulties. Right. He just wants the chicken. Well, get her away. <laughs> Come on, get on. Um, he's almost done. I'm almost done. So I take got, on the drill route. I guess I need to change the point the camera the other direction. So we've got our one Why cup of wait? cool broth. Yep. Or room temperature. Where is that for you? Where is that? Where is that changing for? Um, and then this is the half cup, but you want to bring your broth back up to boil because once these are done and they're cut, I also use the pizza cutter. But you're so. talking about the main broth, not the cup of broth. Yes. Okay. Your main so broth. Main broth, I should need to get boiled. Back to a boil because you're going to drop your dumpling then once you're done. All right. It okay. is done. You want counter space as wow. much as you can. <laughs> um, it is going to get very messy. It always does. If it's not messy, it's not made with love, right? <laughs> um, I'm trying to move everything out of my way. I'm gonna be oh, we, this is just three ingredients. You said room temperature, broth, and egg. And huh? the flour. Correct. Okay. That is it. I know it's the craziest thing. Okay, so you've got your broth. Go ahead, crack your egg. Put it in your cooled off broth, not your main. 
Well, I, I'm putting it in a big bowl because I need that same cup for my flour. That's fine. That's my only measuring cup. I understand. Here's, okay, so you said put the egg in there? Yep, you're going to crack your egg, put it in, no separation, full egg. Ta -da. And then you're going to whisk it in. And again, you wanted this to be cooled off so that you don't cook your egg. And then you should get. All right, it just turned yellow. Yep. So you'll get this color. And I don't like, I want my spices in it. I, I don't, you know, I take the big stuff out, of course, but you want all that flavor in there. So you should get a color about like this. And of course, yours might be a little bit different depending on how you made your broth, what colors you did, how you, yeah. what stuff you did. But you're going to get that milky color. And then I like to add my flour in a half a cup at a time because like I said. Oh, I had a measuring cup to that size. Yeah. I like to add mine in um, half a cup at a time. And the reason being is that, like I said, the I don't know what it is. I literally make it the same almost every time. But you have those days where sometimes you don't need as much broth or I mean, flour, you can eat as much flour or now, it just you, sets up different. So you don't sift it. Nope. You don't sift it. But also gluten-free flour doesn't clump as bad. It doesn't. And maybe this is just habit from old stuff. Because, I mean, I made it with regular flour for years. And the recipe doesn't change with regular flour. It's the same ratios. So there is no, I mean, all you're doing is the substitutions. All right. Now, do you, when you're whisking it in, you're doing it really fast or you just slow? Or? I'm doing it fast and it's going to get clumpy, but it'll smooth out. So it doesn't matter if I just dump it all in and make it clumpy? Nope. All right. Because you're going to be rolling it out, you're going to be kneading it. All right. And it's okay to get flour on the counter because that's where it's going to go, <laughs> is on your counter. Yeah, that was one half. Well, no, that was a half cup. I mean, you can roll it wherever you want, but you're going to be rolling it out. So you're going to need that space. Now, if you make it too dry, I guess. You can add, you know, the the broth back in if you need to, but you want this to be like a bread dough. Like you want that consistency because you want to be able to knead it, but you don't want to over knead it. So you want it to be pretty dry then? You want it to be workable. You don't want it soupy, you want it, you know. And it'll start to... Got a cup and a half so far? Yep. And you see that it's starting to thicken up. And then I do slow it down when it gets a bit thicker and just kind of like fold it in, you know, um, fold it in and then mix. So that, which, what you have is just basically just a big mixing cup. Yeah, big measuring cup. Okay. I was thinking I, yeah, I think. Yeah, I have a big one over at the commercial kitchen. It's like a five cup, I think. Okay. Yeah, this one's a four. Maybe it's four. All right. Okay, so so that it's one and a half cups. It's starting to get gummy. Yeah. I had like a tablespoon of beyond two cups. And to me, I don't feel that it's ready, so I'm going to add. And this is just kind of add as needed, like add what you need. And what I like to get is you're still going to have more flour on this, so don't get it to the complete consistency because you're going to have to knead it once you get it on the counter. You're going to have to. Um, so that's when I get my flour coat. 
I like to do a pretty nice. I got two great tomatoes. Let's see. I can push you back a little bit. Can you guys see this okay? Yeah, perfect. So, I mean, I do a pretty generous amount. <clears throat> oh, generous amount of the. the the flour I, think mine, I think mine is still too dry. It's pretty sticky. The, I, I mean, if you can see the, this is about when I, when oh, it gets about pretty, this. Yours is pretty sticky too. Yes. So, so it's not like just about, a ball of dough that doesn't stick. Yeah. So, but this is when I go ahead and I get it out and I add flour on top of it and I'm going to knead it in. Um, I had like two tablespoons above the two cups and I poured it in. Look, good thing I have another bag because I'm gonna I forgot I needed it for the counter. Hmm. Um, this I mean it gets pretty, pretty sticky. Yeah, you said it's pretty sticky. But you're going to add more flour. You end up adding probably about another half cup to a cup at the end of it. Just depends. And again, you can see how it becomes pretty workable. Um, but you want, you need to get it in that dough consistency. So I just knead in the flour. And you should have your broth that's on the stove, just on a, you know, a nice roll. I've got a small roll going. In yeah, here mine just boil. started boiling, so I turned it down to about halfway. Yeah. So it could be just turn it back up. I get a full boil right away. Yeah. Well, you actually don't want it back at a full boil. You want it on a soft roll um, for your dumplings. Because your dumplings, you want to sit for 30 minutes once you think they're almost done. That's my great grandma's trick. Or not my great grandma, it's my daughter's great grandma. That's my grandma's trick. She would say, um, don't cook them all the way on there because you need to uh, let them sit for 30 minutes. All right, so I feel mine's at a good point to roll out. Are you, I guess you have enough space to roll the whole thing all at once, yeah? I do, yeah. You don't have to. Um, I'm doing about half of it, yeah. Brooklyn, you're fine. And how thick are you trying to roll it? Um. You said you really like it really thin. Yeah, as thin as you can go. Oh, really? Um, some people, yeah, I do mine pretty thin. Some people like them thicker. And that's fine too. I might not have the full capacity. Yeah, usually when I think chick like all the chicken and dumplings I've always gotten, they're real always really thick. Yeah, and actually in Germany, I found this out. Um, my friend, she does, yeah, and these are going to be too thick over here, so some of it I won't be able to fully roll out. Um, in Germany, they actually like them thin as well. Um, my like friend Sam, they had like a cooking thing and some of the people there were from Germany and they said, um, she's like, I want to be able to see through them. I want them so thin. Oh, so I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, definitely you see your hands more get nice a noodle and... than a, a dumpling then. More of a noodle. Uh, I'm going to get a pizza cutter and rinse my hands real quick. There we go, pizza cutter. 
So I got a pizza cutter, but no rolling pin. Where is it? <laughs> I mean, you don't have to use a pizza cutter. That's just what I like to do because I, I like my dumplings in um, small squares. Always use a local bottle of wine. No, just kidding. Always use a local. Keep it local. You can always use a knife to cut it, whatever you want to use. Wow, your pizza cutter's probably behind this, isn't it? Hey, babe, I found the peeler. <laughs> more than I told you it would be. <laughs> it's a low simmer. Oh, that's boiling probably a little too much. Okay. So I just like to probably about, I don't know, an inch wide. And again, dumplings are to your liking, how big, small you want them. Um, the thickness that you want. Sometimes I like to do a mixture, have some thick, have some thin. You, know. you said an inch wide? Yeah. The thickness? Inch, inch or, no, like for your, where I'm cutting. Can you not see me cutting? Yeah, yeah. So it's just the width of width of a finger. Yeah, I'm going a bit. I probably went two. Yeah, two fingers. Inch, two inch, whatever you want. There is no right way. Definitely okay. easier to do with a, uh, what do you call it? Pizza cutter. Pizza cutter? Yeah, but it's so much easier. And about the same way across. Now, do you do you get rid of the ones around the edges that aren't perfectly square? No, sir. Nope. No, sir. And even if you get little tiny corners like this, I still drop them. <laughs> Right. Not going to waste that good dough, good flavor. And like I said, some of them are going to be a little bit thicker than the other ones, and that's okay. Mom, your pizza cutter does not cut straight. <laughs> it has a mind of its own. It's all curvy. And then um, you don't want to, you need to drop them in like one at a time. And this is Maddie's favorite part. And then you just sit here and you drop them in. So I have it just and barely, barely simmering. Is that what you said? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mom. And you can do like this too. And one thing that there is a difference with the gluten-free is that these do fall apart like a little bit easier than regular if that's normal. Um, because they will swell up and drop good. So and it's okay for your flour to get into your broth too, because you want it to thicken up. So my grandma never added flour to it. She just let it go in whenever she was doing her dumplings. And that helps give you a thicker broth too. So it's not going to be by the end of the time, you know, by the end of it, you're not going to have um, like a soup like broth anymore. It is going to be thicker because that flour is going to thicken it up. And that's what you want. The traditional, well, our family, traditional thicker dumpling broth yeah. comes from the flour that goes in with super stuff. With your dumplings? Yeah, with your dumplings. What a meant to say. And Maddie loves this part. Loves it. She gets mad at me if I do it without her. So and see like this one's a thicker one, but I'm still gonna put it in. Sorry. You know, oh, the dog gotta look it up. I just cleaned up from making a pie the other day. So mom made homemade apple pie the other day. Ooh. There's no quicker way to do this. <laughs> Just like. Not really. Because if you don't want them to clump together, that's the thing. Like if you do it all, you know, at once, they're going to get clumpy and you don't want that. So they're not clumping. Oh, wait. I was like, there's some of them already floating to the surface. Yeah. I was thinking they'd all clump together on the bottom of the pot. Nope. Yeah. Don't ever stir. Okay, good to know. That's hard. That's with, a hard one. Like I always want to stir stuff. That's why you don't stir. want it on that low. You know, that's why you want it on the low boil. Now with the gluten free, I do have to stir because I have burned them. Um, I it's just something in the flour. Um, but I I do wait until I drop all of them. These are a lot thicker than I thought they were. Sorry, you like thicker. 
dumplings. I like all dumplings. <laughs> Yes, there's a lot smaller. Mm -hmm. I know you like yours in like strips. I do. I don't. Yeah. Not nearly single way too. Plus it's more so, for her to put in. So my dumplings would be more like three of these long. Okay. Is the way so I do. You make like I think that's a more like a German. What do they call that? I forgot the name of it. Spitzle. Spitzel. There you go. Yes. Yeah. Spitzle. Yeah. Ingeborg, did I say it right at all, Spitzel? No, that's that's something totally different. And I can't say it on this show. Okay. Yeah, we have a lady from Germany on here, so she Hi. was saying how to say it correctly. Was I right about the dumplings? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the Schwabarian do it, uh, the Schab does line, you know, they do it uh, from a piece of a wood. And they have mm -hmm. a circle way how they do that. And the Bavarian call it flatla soup, you know, so, yeah. Okay. And I know it's different, you know, in different areas. And I don't know what region they were in whenever they were telling me about it. This is actually yeah. coming now that I quit thinking. I need to get them all in there. Just taking right. my time. Actually, and he, like Laura was saying, they, they float. So you would one. think, you know, being heavy that they would. Oop, 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 oop. Ah. Hold on. Technical difficulties. <laughs> I got flour on your phone, babe. Sorry. Love you. Yeah, I keep thinking I should get like a. I have I have this laptop on the shelf right up here that's specifically just for this because it gets all covered with and flour, all sorts of stuff. I'm sure. But, all right. Yeah, and I or you're right. I I find this calming, and I don't know if it's like a well, comfort. I find cooking to to be the family for me. Yeah, and like this meditation because you have to pay attention. You do. And with this, like for it to take time, that was something that I never bothered because that means I was in the kitchen, whether it be my mom, my grandma, anybody. Like I know that this is something that I have to have time for it and I'm fine to set aside time for it, but you have to be conscious of the fact that there's not like this, even though it's two hours, this is the quick way. And you guys are falling. <laughs> Um, how big do these ones get? Because like the ch chicken and dumplings we have locally tend mm -hmm. to be really thick in like, I don't know, I don't know, almost four inch squares, it seems like when you get them at restaurants around here. These don't seem to swell. Um, to answer your question, like they don't swell that mat. Like they really don't get much bigger. Okay, um, so it's more like, a, yeah, little teeny fun noodles. Yeah. And this is how my grandma cut them. Now, like my mom was saying, she likes to cut them in strips. But my grandma, this is how my grandma Daryl always did this. She always so did. How come, how come you haven't changed? Like, you think every generation would change something majorly? Um, why change something good? Well, I, guess I mean, I do... You have changed it to be gluten free, but that's just because of your allergies, not out of choice. Right. right. And and I, you know, my grandma never did the the celery or the carrot. Mom sometimes does, sometimes doesn't. I'm actually the one that allergic. Yeah. Yeah, no, not always. Yeah. Um, and sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. You know that. But it seems, you know, ever since I had to go gluten free, I do like. The celery and onion in it no matter what so because they are gluten-free these do need stir now normally if you do this non-gluten-free and and when you stir it don't try to do it more of like a folding you know um because you do want to be gentle with them but unfortunately with the gluten-free ones you have to let you have to stir them 
Um, so once they're all in. You got all yours in already? I did. Oh, well, I, I have to roll out the, I only did half. You don't. So see, they aren't swelling up that much. This is probably as much as they will swell up. Um, so you're gonna let it cook for about, I'm sorry, my allergies are killing me. The pollen count's high here today. Um, probably like 10 to 15 minutes. And then I pull it out. And then once you look at the center, when the center's still gooey, but the outside you can tell is done if you work with dough. If you know how you know dough looks, you can see a color difference if you're not familiar in making dumplings. Like if this is your first, you know, round of making something like this, the center is gonna be darker. And that's how you know that it's still gooey. So once the center's gooey, but the outside is a little bit of that lighter color, that's when you're actually gonna turn it off and then you're gonna cover it and you're gonna let it cook for. 30 minutes is what it usually was for full bore gluten, um, but that gets it to thicken up. That gets the dumplings to complete and you don't have to worry about them burning because if you boil so, these too long, they will eventually go down. So when to the you bottom. say you put the lid on and you shut it off, put the lid on, the, yep. the gluten-free ones don't turn mushy? No. Nope. They do not. And I think it's because you have the broth in it. Um, so, I mean, you know, if they were going to turn mushy like they would now, if you look at them, they're, they're still keeping that consistency. They're still, they're not losing their shape, you know, and you will have to cut them in half. Now, I do feel that the gluten-free ones cook quicker than um, full bore, as we say in our house. <laughs> full bore. Now, uh, ask, ask your family, do the... What do they think the difference? Do they feel like it's tremendously different, the gluten-free? Mom, do you feel like my gluten-free dumplings are any different? Mm -mm. She said the texture is slightly different. The flavors, yeah, I, I agree with that. Flavor is the same. The texture is slightly different, but you're going to have that with any gluten-free flour, no matter what you're making. Yeah. I have found that um, because it is you're cooking with something completely different. So of course it's gonna be different. Um, now for like noodles, you can tell a difference. Um, David can always tell a difference between the gluten-free and- Although I just got some lentil gluten-free noodles and they actually have, they're similar to, if you ever had whole wheat. Mm -hmm. I would say okay. they're exactly the same. But, okay. So um, everybody has their chicken. If you're using chicken set aside, right? You're going to add that chicken in. I'm going to go ahead and test a noodle because they do cook a lot quicker. And I want to be able to show you guys what it looks like. Um, so like this one I did thicker because again, you know, it was it was an edge. So this one's not thin, but then you're going to have some of those thin ones. That's okay. <laughs> it so really all is. This extra flour I have on this board, just throw it in there for thickener, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. That's what I was doing with this. I've got it ready to go too. Don't waste any of that. I love that. Nope. Don't waste it. Use it. I was just worried it might clump everything together, but Nope. So now that I've put it all in, you said gently stir it. Gently stir it. But and you want to do it before your flour does clump up. So I have very few there. of them. Um, floating them. Okay. I'm gonna see if I can get good. Okay. Do you see? the line in the center. Not no, really. I don't see it. I can imagine it. <laughs> it would be, hold on, let me. So it's just no. basically you have a, a center that's not as cooked. Yeah, so. This looks like chicken and dumplings. <laughs> if you look right here. Oh, see I see it the, now. 
Yeah. So this is how you know it's time to turn it off. And before you let it. Do they float to the surface first? Yes. But they will stay at the surface even after they don't sink when they're done. Yeah, because I have very few of them floating to the surface. Mm -hmm. So before you turn it off, you're going to get that chicken and you're going to add it in. You're going to give it a stir. Then you're going to turn it off and you're going to cover it. But that wouldn't that, I mean, putting the chicken in would cool it down. Mm -hmm. So that's why you don't turn it off until your chicken is in and stirred. Got it. Mom, where's your lid to this one? My what? Lid. Right. You're, you weren't kidding. I got flour on the floor. I got flour. Oh, yeah. No, it's messy. Yeah, it's everywhere. But I, I, I managed. I don't know how it is. I'm looking. No, I do have flour on my belly. I didn't put an <laughs> apron. The one time you put like an apron every time, and this time I didn't. But I have. So. Is that it? But, so she. I stirred it only once, but you said don't stir it again. Is that it? I'm twitching. I want to stir it. I know. It's hard. It's hard. And you're not even like stirring. Like, here, we. I'll bring it closer. Yeah, I needed your kind of bag. So, like, what I do is I fold it over and then I put a rubber band around it. So, yeah, you just, you know, gently. Fold it over. Oh, you started then... it again? I was just trying to do it to show you guys. But oh, my okay. thing keeps going. So I'm going to turn it off. And again, the gluten doesn't take, the gluten free doesn't take as long as regular. So um, honestly, just come back and test it out. That line that you guys saw will be gone when they're done. It will be the same color through and through. And then you get to clean up while it sits because you know you made a mess. I know <laughs> I did. <laughs> so does anybody have questions? Like, uh, uh -huh. Look at how beautiful that is. I know. <laughs> right here and they're delicious. Let me get one. Oh. It's hot. <laughs> You said break it in half. Yep. Yeah, it's got it definitely got a white line. Yep. So keep on cooking it. Add that chicken and turn it off. So I could add the chicken now, or should yeah. I cook the noodles first? Um, you leave it where it's at. Add your chicken in. Let it get that temperature up a little bit and then turn it off because you're going to let it sit and that's going to finish cooking your noodles. Kind of like whenever you lay your meat out on the counter, you want to let it rest so that it can cook. This is technically your rest so that it can finish cooking. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Anybody have any final questions for Sydney? Huh. Or Sydney, do you have any final something or other? Thank you for sharing the family recipe. Oh, you're welcome. And this is something that, you know, I mean, it's got a good enough base. You can make it your own. You can experiment with it, kind of like we have with the lavender flower. Um, the lavender flower is definitely not a family thing. That was like you were asking earlier, you know, I haven't changed the recipe throughout the generation. I have not with the dumplings because it works so good. Um, I've never messed up dumplings ever since I've made them just because it's such a simple recipe. It does stick together. Now, of course it got messed up whenever uh, we tried almond flour, but as far as you have, you know, that was an experiment. Was One cup of uh, broth at room temperature, two cups of flour and an egg at room temperature. Right. But you want to whisk in your egg before you do your flour. You want to get that almost like a, a pasty color you know you want to get that full color um and if you do it too hot you will cook your egg you will and then you got it now that we've all you know done in a hurry before 
but um, you do want that to be at room temp. And that's, again, that's when I set it aside and pick my chicken. Set it aside, you let it go because when you're fully making it and you're gonna get flour like stuck to you, it's like glue. <laughs> I'm gonna have to like, that's what I'm sitting here doing is picking it out. Um, it's messy, it is, but it's so much fun. And if you have kids, my daughter, loves it she's actually probably gonna be very upset with me that i made these sleep without her <laughs> and she's at her dad um but she loves it like she, we'll she loves have to do another her. recipe with her yeah so we'll, we'll schedule one we actually yeah. had one young lady come on and her mom assisted her it was the young lady was the cook oh that's cool we had that once yeah well, i just Matthew. i love when you know traditions get passed down because mm -hmm. You know, cooking is fun. It is. And, and like, you know, I added the lavender flower. And my grandma, my grandma Darylin, my mom is actually the one that started using, you know, the basil, the oregano. Because my grandma Darylin only did chicken bouillon. She did chicken stock. So she, whether it was her own or store-bought, then she would add two chicken bouillons and one beef bouillon and salt and pepper. And that's it. And it was still delicious but you know my mom being as big of a cook as she is and you know we've talked about it before how we have cajun in our family so my mom knows cajun recipes my mom makes a killer gumbo mm. and she learned it in new orleans ask her if she wants family. to be on <laughs> mom do you want to make gumbo for a I was just like i i was just in she new orleans learned, and learned to make turkey you know gumbo. we should uh it's we should like, make it all like but, seafood um, part of it is the chicken back in the day was more flavorful, you know, because yeah. it was it was e eating a lot more wild stuff. So it had a lot more flavor. So if you can buy like a free range chicken, it definitely has more mm -hmm. flavor. And you need less seasoning oh, yeah. to it. And mom uses okra in her gumbo. Not a lot of people do unless you're from, you know, down south. That That's more of a southern thing than it is here. Like some people don't even know what okra is. Me, okra was a Baton Rouge version instead of a new orleans version yep. uh, what what was local so anybody have any questions and we'll wrap up and then um everybody gets spend some, spend some time chatting and eating together did you put noodles in it i was trying to see nope just the dumplings oh okay <laughs> i heard you yeah. said noodles so. oh nope there are not any noodles in it it's just your dough and your dumplings Okay, thanks. Welcome, like, um, oh, I forgot to shut mine off. Put the lid on. <laughs> so it'll turn mushy if I leave it, leave it on. All right. Thank you so much. Let me wrap up. So I'd say I'm only ever using the beer.